Now that you have purchased and received the perfect Frosty Factory frozen beverage machine for your needs, the cartons should be properly unpacked and inspected. Make sure the crate has no visible signs of mishandling. Cut the package tape at the four bottom corners and remove the entire carton top. Inspect the unit for damage that could occur during shipping. It is very important to inspect all the parts and small boxes in the carton. Most will be found inside the unit's hopper. Some larger machines will have parts and or boxes in the space directly under the unit. Parts shipped with the unit will include the beater bar assembly, which is shipped in place, drip tray, faceplate assembly with faucet body, faucet plunger assembly, and the goodie bag with spare faucet O-rings, faceplate knobs, sanitizer, petrogel, faucet and drip tube brushes, and a warranty card. If you have ordered a water-cooled unit, hose connections will come with a machine. If you have purchased remote refrigeration equipment, quick disconnects will be packed with the dispenser. 215F models have a box of casters. 127A models have a rear skirt. There are two important factors to consider when choosing a location for your equipment. It must be a level surface. It must allow proper clearance depending on the type of refrigeration used. Air-cooled models require a minimum of 8 inches for ventilation at the rear and sides to operate effectively. Water-cooled models do not require ventilation and can be placed side by side. They do require an ample water source and a method of water disposal, either a drain or recirculating system. This will require additional plumbing. They require four inches of clearance at the rear of the machine to allow for fittings. Remote refrigeration models do not require ventilation and can be placed side by side. They have a condensing unit that is placed separate from the dispenser. This requires a licensed refrigeration technician to install. They require six inches of clearance in the rear of the machine to allow for fittings. Frosty factory equipment assembly. Please note that when following these steps to reassemble your machine after cleaning, be sure to check all seals and O-rings for excessive wear and replace them as needed. To assemble your machine, remove the beater bar assembly and discard the temporary rubber grommets and metal bar that holds it in place during shipping. Test the spring action of the rear seal component as lubrication may be required. If it doesn't move easily, the seal has set. Simply pull firmly to regain spring action. If the spring still does not move easily, remove the seal component and apply a thin film of lubrication to the shaft only using sanitary food service grade lubricant. Do not lubricate any other part of the seal as this will cause leaks. Slide the beater bar seal onto the back of the shaft metal cup first. The black carbon ring should face the rear of the cylinder as illustrated on the hopper lid. Make sure the white ceramic ring is free of grease. Install the beater bar assembly into the cylinder by inserting the end of the shaft into the white ceramic ring. And turn until you feel it engage into the drive assembly. Lubricate the faceplate O-ring with the same sanitary gel. Press the O-ring firmly into the groove. Place the front end of the beater into the faceplate bushing and slide the faceplate onto the four posts, securing the faceplate with the faceplate knobs. Be sure to alternate the tightening of the faceplate knobs using opposite corners. Make sure the faceplate is sealed and secure. Place the float on its stem, making sure the two dots and or the raised center lip are facing upward. Snap the clip into place. 
lubricate the faucet O-rings. Insert the plunger assembly into the faucet body and tighten the nut. Pull and check for the closing spring action. Hang the drip tray on the two screws provided on the front panel. Remove all exterior smudges and dirt from the cabinet using a stainless steel cleaner. With the top switch in the hand or off position, plug the unit into a properly sized, dedicated electrical outlet. Sanitize the unit by adding two ounces of sanitizing solution to two gallons of water. Pour into the machine's hopper, and with a brush, clean the hopper and hopper cylinder union. Turn the top switch to the faucet or the left, allowing the solution to stir in the cylinder for at least five minutes. Turn the switch back into the off position, then drain and rinse with cool water. The equipment is now ready for mix to be added. There are some very important mix guidelines that must be followed to ensure your frosty factory equipment operates properly. Frosty factory equipment produces an extremely fine-grained frozen slush product. In order to produce this type of drink, the mix must have natural sugar content or Splenda brand sugar substitute only. Absolutely no other artificial sweeteners can be used. There are many packaged mixed products available specifically designed for slush equipment. The bricks level or measure of sugar content must be between 13 to 18 bricks for proper equipment function. Simple syrup or neutral base, fruit juices, sweetened coffee, cocktail, and fruit flavor mixes all create an interesting and diverse menu. If you like to serve alcoholic beverages, the recipe should not contain more than 25% alcohol. The recommended level is from 10 to 15%. If you use mix which requires alcohol in the recipe and you wish to produce a non-alcoholic drink, contact your mix provider for a revised recipe as sugar levels will change. Let your imagination run wild when choosing flavor and drink names and watch your profits soar.